the cloud. All right. So my name is Melody Hartzler. For those who haven't met me, I am a clinical pharmacist and the owner of Farm to Table. And I um, lead a team of amazing um, clinicians that are all pharmacists and focused on helping people get well, which is not something people think about when they think about the pharmacist. Generally, we think about going to the pharmacy when you're sick or being on chronic medications. And so we're really trying to flip the picture and just really help people get off of medications and help them thrive and help them get to a point where they're getting answers from the healthcare system. Um, so tonight we are talking about detoxification um, because we are getting ready to launch our, we do it twice a year. We may do it three times next year, depending on how it goes, but we're looking to launch our 14 day reset, which is actually going to start November. We're gonna have a kickoff call on November 6th. So tonight really is just a little bit about detoxification, why it's important, and a little bit about our program in case you're interested in signing up. So um, my background as a clinical pharmacist actually is in the diabetes space, and um, I've been taking care of patients with diabetes for 12, 13 years now as a pharmacist. And um, a lot of the connection between, you know, environmental triggers and things in diabetes, there's a lot of detoxification components and metabolic syndrome is definitely something that is increasing in our population. And so we know there's certain chemicals that are causing insulin resistance. There's probably a lot of chemicals we are exposed to that we don't know what the outcomes are. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I'm passionate about this. Certainly there's lots of other reasons. Um, metabolic syndrome is pretty complex because there can be gut level reasons, um, detoxification type reasons, nutrient depletion reasons, stress reasons. There's lots of things there, but that's for another webinar tonight. We're going to focus on the detox. Um, and so the first question is what is detox? So I'd love for you guys to put in the chat box about what you think um, the definition of detox is. And so we'll see what kinds of answers we get here. So just take a moment, say hi, where you're from in the chat, and then also um, put in what you think about detox or what you, what it is. Don't be shy. <laughs> There's a couple minutes there. All right, no one has any answers for what detox is. There we go, here we go. Montana, re-alkalizing, okay. Katie, removal of toxins. So hi, Cassandra from Montana. I hope you know Sarah, one of our amazing pharmacists that lives in Montana. I saw that you might live near her. Um, and anything else that you can think of? Oh, good. <laughs> Veronica, one of our pharmacists is in, who is also amazing is in Texas and Katie is too. Sorry for, <laughs> she's in Maine. We got people from all over the country here. This is great. Supporting your body's ability to get rid of junk. You ingest their food and drugs. Awesome. Yes. So getting rid of the junk in our bodies is a great um, description. And then, and the cool thing, um, is that, and Emily is also one of our team members here. So she is saying that she is um, saying a normal process of getting ready when it doesn't need. And that's exactly right. We have the organs in our body. We have our liver, we have our kidneys, we have our gut, which are our three main detoxification organs. And the challenge is that like our body can't keep up with all that it's exposed to in today's world. And so that's really where we are able to use these detoxification type um, programs to really help um, support your body and give your body the nutrients to be able to do that process. And so um, that's what we're going to talk about tonight. And so the question is when, what, you know, who, why, how, and we're going to talk a little bit about that as we move forward. So when we're looking at possible symptoms, I already mentioned diabetes and obesity, metabolic syndrome, sort of all in that triad. Um, and so other things that we think about from detoxification, certainly, um, inflammation can be connected, which can eventually lead to different cancers and the immune system being, um, out of sorts, um, fatigue, infertility, um, allergies, all kinds of things, behavioral mood disorders, neurological conditions. So cognitive deficits, um, headaches, tremors, lots of things can be connected to having, um, potential toxins in our system. 
And then the strategy um, that we are trying to encourage, there's a lot of crazy, I mean, detox is sometimes a word that I don't even like to use because I feel like it has a negative connotation where people are like, oh, this is just a fad thing. This is just something that's not safe. Um, and so that's actually why we like to call it a reset. Um, we're using and supporting a detoxification process, but we're also just sort of resetting our body and its own capabilities of, um, doing this. And so we're really encouraging the strategy of uh, that healthy elimination of toxins. And so here are all the ways that we eliminate. So we talked about some of the main ones. We talked about the colon. So we have the colon, um, we wear the fecal matter and toxic matter, any parasites and bacteria that we encounter all should be coming through the colon. Um, the lungs are actually a powerful detox organ. So they release gases such as carbon dioxide. We also have the skin so we can actually secrete toxins through the skin via sweat. And so that's one of the reasons we're going to talk about why it's important to sweat and get moving and then the lymph. So the lymph is really important because this is just sort of that extra fluid in your body that if we don't have movement, we don't push that around and it can become stagnant and that can become dangerous to our body. Um, so making sure we're getting good movement of lymph, um, is important. And then the kidneys we talked about, so they filter the body's waste. And then we also have the liver, which is one of the big organs that we think about, which is actually breaking down any chemicals, any drugs that we take, any things we ingest, um, even our hormones, it's breaking them down and turning them into different pieces to help get rid of excess. So the liver is one of the organs that needs the most support, um, from our, our bodies in the nutrition component of our detoxification. And so one thing also that's important to consider is the gut microbiome. So we could talk for hours and hours and hours, probably weeks and years about the microbiome. We're really just on the tip of the iceberg. I always say about learning about the microbiome, but a couple of key points about what the microbiome does is the microbiome is really important with nutrient absorption and also, um, really this healthy microbiome helps to digest our food better. It also supports our immune system. So over 70%, 80% of our gut is actually gut associated lymphoid tissue. And so it's really the first, um, line, you know, defense in our, in our body. And so this is one of the reasons why many of us think that we are seeing more and more food allergies now is because we're seeing more and more antibiotics used more and more pesticides, toxins, damaging our gut microbiome. And that's contributing to creating this intestinal permeability, which is sometimes termed as leaky gut. And that contributes to just these normal food particles that we eat all of a sudden causing inflammation because the body's sort of attacking them. So, um, so helping the integrity of that gut lining, helping to decrease the permeability, resetting that is really important. And so certainly a 14 day plan is great if you've got some minor things going on, but if you have some more extensive, and we'll talk about this sort of as we move through the program for those that join us, but if you have more extensive things going on with your gut, like severe constipation, diarrhea, um, bloating, abdominal pain, we may need to work on a more one-on-one -on -one basis to sort of uncover, peel back the layers of what the root cause of this is that for individuals so that we can really hit that. Because if you're dealing with those things, sometimes throwing a bunch of fiber and all of those things can be challenging, but I think a reset can really be, it can be good, a good start because you can see if you pull out some of these, um, foods that maybe might be triggering some of the symptoms, you can see if that helps. Um, so it may be sort of a, a, a different journey for someone that maybe has has some severe gut symptoms going on already. Um, not, not necessarily a contraindication, but I think sometimes it just means we have to do more digging, but as far as other things that the gut microbiome important pieces are fiber is really important. So we should be eating lots and lots of fiber. And so, I mean, the average American probably gets less than 10 grams of fiber today. And in reality, we're supposed to eat like 20 to 30 grams of fiber. So, um, Fiber is super important for helping pull toxins. And so it helps bind things up and helps move things throughout the digestive tract. And also um, is important, it is important, our gut is important for the nervous system. So it's actually the vagus nerve um, is the nerve that sort of helps to balance our, our parasympathetic and, and sympathetic nervous system, which are like the fight and flight response. So when we can help activate the vagus nerve, that helps provide the calming response that we need. And so that nerve is also really important to helping the gut motility. So I don't know if anyone's ever like laid on your back and done some deep breathing, or you've done yoga, maybe some restorative yoga, where you're just laying there and you can just breathe really deeply. But within a few minutes, you will notice that your stomach is gurgling and you're going to feel your system start to, you know, 
move things through a little bit better. And so that's really one of the key focuses of our program is really the de-stress component, um, because that's going to be really important for your gut health as well. Um, so we talked a little bit about the food sensitivities, but food sensitivities, this program does pull out some of the big ones that can be triggers. And so, um, and, and puts in a lot of those nutrient, nutrient dense foods. And so we want to make sure that we're, um, you know, doing that so we can see if, if certain foods are triggering us. And then after the program, if you feel a ton better, we would want you to just slowly reintroduce those foods to see if those foods were triggering things versus dumping everything back into your diet all at once. Um, and then keeping a healthy mi microbiome, um, pre and probiotics can be really important. And so, um, those can be things that you can add to the program if you already have them, or if you want a recommendation from us for, for one, we can certainly um, recommend that, but those, um, are definitely, um, helpful to helping, you know, balance the gut and restore the gut and some key microbes can help with that gut healing and intestinal permeability piece. All right. So a little bit more about the lymphatic system. I'm noticing in the chat, Veronica says fiber is the mop for the junk. And that is a good example. <laughs> so we're helping mop up um, those things that are floating around. And also to fiber pools, bile, fiber and, and fats and things like that pool bile acids. And so when you have the bile acids come out, then the liver has to regenerate those. Um, and so that also, you know, helps to like keep the circulation piece going and that sort of gut liver axis. Um, but the lymphatic system, so we have part of the circulatory system and again, the immune system. So it is an absorption of fatty acids and subsequent transport, um, to fat and, and really helping that whole circulatory system. But it's, its purpose is the production of immune system, immune cells. So we've got the lymphocytes, monocytes, antibody producing cells called plasma cells. So you've probably heard about some of these things, even in the, in the news, you know, when we're talking about COVID and plasma cells and, and producing antibodies and, and what that looks like. But, um, so this is a really important component of our, our detoxification process is making sure that this part of the circulatory system and these things are moving around like they should. And so exercise and rebounding. So if you've not heard about rebounding, rebounding is having just like a bouncy, like a small, um, trampoline can be helpful. You just bounce up and down and that helps get your lymphatic system moving. You can do that also, um, by doing yoga can be a great way to get your lymphatic system moving, dry brushing, um, which we had a reel on Instagram. If you haven't seen it, one of our pharmacists was, was using a dry brush in one of those videos recently. Um, but other things are sweating using your sauna. If you have a sauna or if you have access to a sauna, um, at a gym or something like that, doing a few minutes in there, don't start with 20 minutes all at once. Cause you might get dehydrated. So if you're, um, able to, then you can sit in there probably for like three or four minutes, the first time increased by three minutes, like every few times that you sit in there and see how you do. And definitely if you are using a sauna, um, or any hot yoga or anything like that, where you're going to be sweating a lot, you want to make sure to replenish your um, electrolytes. So Veronica says sit in your car in the eight without AC in Texas for a good sweat. So yes, but be careful not to sit there too long. Cause we don't want anyone to be dying in their car. So hopefully, um, maybe you have to keep the window rolled down a little bit. Um, so you can have, have that, um, heat, but that would definitely get you heated up pretty quickly. I'm sure, especially in the summer months. Oh my goodness. I went to Texas last fall in, um, well, it was summer still labor day. Oh, it was hot, hot, hot. So I don't know how you guys do it. Um, but anyways, so those are great ways to move. Um, there's also homeopathic remedies. So I've actually used these a couple of times in patients, um, that had some liver, elevated liver enzymes and just needed to help with detoxification and, um, bringing those liver enzymes down and they actually work really well. So, um, that's an option too. And some of the more, um, extensive detoxification programs that we use for patients with Lyme or patients with, um, some biotoxin illness, maybe they were exposed to mold or they had different infections and we're trying to sort of help support their body. Um, we do use some homeopathic remedies, um, in those type of systems. So, um, and Katie says blood has the heart to pump it around and the lymph really relies on movement. And so that's absolutely true. So the lymphatic system, if we're not moving, it's not getting, getting everything pushed around. So massage is another technique, like a really deep tissue massage can be helpful. There's also specific lymphatic massages, um, techniques that you can ask massage therapists to do as well. Um, so great. I love it. Keep, keep going in the chat ladies. Um, 
All right. And so the lungs, we talked mentioned at the beginning, so the lungs are this exchange center for oxygen, carbon dioxide that keeps us energized, keeps us functioning and really keeps us alive. And um, our exhalation of that carbon dioxide also helps balance the body's pH. So the body is really, you know, there's a lot of talk about alkalinization. And I think some of, in some instances that's that's helpful but our body does a really good job on its own just really balancing that ph um so regardless of if we eat acid 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 um type things if we're eating tomatoes all day long our body we're breathing out um and helping replenish um and getting the balance of the body with the ph so um excretion of waste products also it happens in that lung and breathing out so it's really sort of a crazy process but if you think about you know how delicate the lungs are too with exposures to chemicals um they are you know a really important piece of of maintaining our wellness and even just that breath and that that exhalation and the vagus nerve stimulation um with breathing um deep breathing especially can be really helpful all right. So other, we mentioned the deep breathing practices. So our program does include this and we have some videos in the app that you'll download as part of the program to help you keep balanced. Um, we may also point you to some bonus type content. We have several yoga instructors on our team, um, they're pharmacists and yoga instructors. And so, um, we'll definitely make sure you guys have some breathing exercises and may even do some during our, our coaching calls that we have. And then um, getting fresh air is really important. So stepping outside, breathing in um, that fresh air, um, there's so much evidence that inside our house, there's way more toxins than outside, even if you live in a city, um, because of, you know, if you think about uh, the different types of products that we have in our house, um, you know, not every thing is hard, full hardwood, like it probably should be. We have a lot of like um, toxins coming up from paint and different flooring and carpet and all of those things, um, depending on what types of materials in your house. So certainly there's lower tax ways to build a house, but in sometimes that's can be really expensive or out of um, reach for some people. So um, there's some great air filtration systems that you can look at and we can, we'll probably send some emails out with some of these type things. Um, and then there's also, you know, just getting outside as much as you can. If you, if you don't have, you know, severe allergies and it's comfortable temperature, open those windows, get the air movement as much as you can as well. Um, and just pay attention to what you might be breathing in. I mean, if you're, in a facility that, that you have a lot of chemicals around you, maybe you're working in a factory or, um, you might work with like industrial solvents, you know, in a lab or something like that. I'm um, just really making sure that you're taking precautions and making sure you're not breathing in, um, additional toxins. And then the kidneys. So we talked a little bit about them before, but each day they process about 200 quarts of blood, which is getting rid of waste and byproducts and toxin removal. And so the kidneys also remove um, acid that it's produced by the cells of the body and maintain a healthy balance of water. Also our minerals and our, such as sodium, calcium, phosphorus, potassium, all of those different minerals, the kidneys making sure that all of that is regulated. And so a key focus here is we want to drink plenty of water, um, ideally water that has been filtered and, rem and helps remove the toxins. So one of our, you know, one of the options is reverse osmosis. Reverse osmosis does also remove minerals. So you have to make sure that you're getting enough minerals from your diet or maybe replacing those minerals with some drops in your water. Um, but it does remove, you know, pesticides and the drugs and all the stuff in our tap water. Um, but there's some other things, like if you're not in a place where you can install reverse osmosis, there's something called the aqua gear filter that does a great job at filtering a lot of these things, which will, we can link for you. And, um, also the Ber Berkey filter, I was going to say that Veronica just mentioned that too. Um, so that one's an awesome one as well. It's a little bigger, a little clunkier. Um, you definitely taste more of the minerals, um, in that one too. So I'm not as much of a fan of the taste of that. Um, but it really depends on it. Some people like love that. If you like more of the mineral, the mineral water taste, um, Awesome. And then other things with the kidneys that can be really helpful are antioxidants. So cranberries, black cherries, blueberries, beets, seaweed, um, juice, spinach, lemon juice, excuse me. And then herbs like stinging nettles or burdock root are also great. And stinging nettles is a really good tea um, option too, if you're um, looking for something to drink instead of coffee during, during the detox. Um, 
Yes. Yes. We mentioned that adding back Veronica put in the chat about, um, adding back trace minerals in a supplement. Yeah. So that's important. You can do it in drops, which does affect the taste of your water, or you can just take a supplement if you don't like, um, the mineral taste. All right. And then let's see. So other things, the skin. So the skin acts as a supplemental filter for the kidneys for removing waste from the body. So when the other organs are congested, the skin tries to push out toxins through the skin. And so often the skin appearance can really be like a barometer for our health. Um, I see a lot of patients with significant fluid retention, um, in their metabolic clinic. And, um, it just really is, it can be challenging when, when the heart and all these organs aren't able to keep up anymore to really address that fluid and the congestion. But, um, for even people that are not, you know, severely ill like that, you know, you might see puffy eyes or, um, other different areas of body, swollen hands, different things can be signs that the body has, um, some toxic overload. And then everything we absorb, we absorb so much from our skin. So things like the, you know, lotion you're putting on your sunblock you're putting on, um, which, you know, is one of the things I know it's hard to avoid in the summer, but trying to find just mineral-based sunscreens, which is that part's easy, but then swimming in the, the pool with all the people that are not wearing the mineral-based sunscreens is the challenge part, right? If you, if you don't have your own private pool. Um, but you know, there's some things in life we just can't av avoid all the time. And I think that's why it's important to do these detox programs, um, a couple of times a year and just help your body have that support because we still have to live life and we still have to, um, you know, we're not gonna be able to walk around in a bubble uh, all the time. So really just, um, knowing, you know, what things you can avoid and, um, and making sure we're supporting as best we can, I think is important. We could get crazy and just like do a million things. And, um, and that's not realistic oftentimes for most people. So we talked about sweating, I think pretty in depth already. So we're going to leave that there. Um, and then the liver. So the liver has some important jobs. It does detoxification. So it is our like real filter recovers, um, and eliminates toxins. It synthesizes, um, carbohydrates and the fat, the proteins produces bile, um, and is really an essential element for our digestion. So that bile helps break down the fats, which is important to helping fat soluble vitamins absorb. So it mentions the liver stores, those fat soluble vitamins. So the A, D, E, and K are stored by the liver. It also stores carbohydrates in the form of glycogens. And then when we need energy, when we're in the fasting state, the liver will actually send out, um, and it's called hepatic gluconeogenesis, but it's a production of glucose by the liver from those stores. So it, it does lots of things. Um, and so it's important it's with our energy balance. Um, it has to respond to the signals from insulin to know like, Hey, we don't need any extra glucose out right now. We've got food here, um, and digest in our blood sugars rising. Um, so it, it does a, a great job in all these different areas, but we do have to make sure it's supported. And unfortunately, um, conditions like fatty liver and which can progress to cirrhosis are definitely on the rise. And this is, um, very much connected to the intake of fructose. So if you, um, think about fructose, we think, oh, that's in fruits, you know, and that's fine. And, and a small amount of fruits, but we think about all the things with high fructose corn syrup in them. And, um, just like, I mean, we're seeing fatty liver in kids, we're seeing it in kids as young as 11 and 12. Um, and so anyone that presents with type two diabetes has some element of fatty liver already. So it's really important, um, to keep excess fructose out of our diet to have a healthy liver and, um, also to support our livers, um, with good nutrients that we're going to talk about. So, um, obviously alcohol is something that can impact liver impairment and also, or cause liver impairment, which is also a, a cause of cirrhosis or liver damage. Um, but certainly there are some positive benefits to things like red wine. And we have seen studies that show, um, a glass of red wine can be, you know, included in like a Mediterranean diet and, and do um, have benefits. So we just have to balance that with the fact that it still is alcohol and still can increase risk of, um, breast cancer and in, in some women, especially women that are at higher risk for that. And so, um, really just looking at your own genetics and your own, um, dietary situation, individualize your choice there, but definitely avoid the heavy drinking, um, and illicit drug use for sure, but really eating the anti-inflammatory diet. I mentioned the Mediterranean diet. So, so many good things about that. Lots of olive oil is important, which is a polyphenol, also polyphenols from the grapes and the 
um, dark colored berries. Um, and so that, you know, we can talk more about nutrition, but our plan, um, the de detoxification plan incorporates a lot of those same foods and then managing your sugar and your triglyceride levels. So triglycerides are sort of what's produced when there's so much sugar, the liver can't handle it. And so we get these excess triglycerides. So when people present sometimes to our clinic, my clinic, um, their blood sugars might be 500 or 600, but they've been like that for 12 months and their triglycerides will be through the roof. Um, and so we could get them drugs to lower the triglycerides, but that's not the problem, right? The problem is their blood sugars are so high in producing this. So, um, so really supporting your liver means balancing your blood sugars and that ultimately will keep your triglycerides in a good place. And so the supplements, um, we tend to use liver support supplements just periodically. So a couple of times a year, but if someone is having uh, struggles with, um, liver enzymes or, and I do see a lot of liver enzyme elevations from gut issues. So I've had several patients that come in and their liver enzymes are elevated because they've got SIBO or they have, um, intestinal overgrowth and of the yeast or something that's, that's causing liver congestion. So, um, so once we correct that and, and do some liver support, they come down. So there might be some additional reasons for liver support, um, but it may not be something someone needs like on an ongoing basis. All right. So our strategy, um, besides, you know, supporting the body is also, um, to decrease the toxic load. So Katie mentioned in the, um, chat here about starting with things that use the most when it comes to beauty products. So if you're using a good, you know, a foundation every day or like a primer, making sure that is just mineral based sunscreen. Um, and if you're, or maybe it doesn't have some of the other potential, um, toxins in there. And, um, there, we're going to talk about, I think at the end of this, but EWG is a great database that you can look up some of those and look at some of the safety data. Some of the things rated in there are just rate. They might have a higher score because there's something that could be a, like allergic producing. So it might have like a dermatitis or some people could react to it on the skin. Whereas other things might be listed as potential carcinogen or potential, which means like could promote cancer, um, or other things could, there might be other reasons that it's listed in the system. So it's, it takes a little bit to just look beyond the score and see like what actually is there. Um, but certainly fragrances and things like that sometimes can, can work, cause toxic, um, effects for patients and cause headaches in some people too. Um, but your toxic load. So how is your bucket filled? So is your bucket filled, um, with all those good nutrients or is your bucket sort of overflowing, um, with those toxins. So we'll talk a little bit here about the different types of toxins that we're exposed to, but we are exposed to so much. Um, BPA is a big one. And so the interesting part is like so much is BPA free now, except for receipts. Um, and receipts are something we're touching all of the time. And if we talk, we've talked about before our skin, there's lots of absorption. Um, and I used to never take the receipt, but now owning a business and having to have records of, of things that end up taking the receipts more often. Um, so trying to make sure we're not touching that a lot or keeping it out of our kids' hands, um, is important. Um, but lead mercury are common ones, specifically mercury when it comes to fish, unfortunately, it's so good for us from the mega three fatty acids, but there's definitely higher levels of mercury. And so there's charts out there that you can find that, um, talk about what types of fish have lowest amount of mercury, certainly the smaller ones, because they're at the, at the end of the food chain and the bigger ones have more mercury because they're eating all the other fish, um, in the food chain. So just, you know, watch those types of things that they're higher mercury fish, like tuna, um, then you want to make sure, or like sea bass is a high one, even though it's so good. Right. Um, we want to make sure that we're only eating that once in a while. Um, but other things like mercury fillings can be a problem. Um, you know, some people do recommend removal though. I was talking to my neighbor who, um, is a dentist and specializes in root canals. And he was telling me, um, which I know is a whole nother topic, but, um, he was telling me that, a lot of people that get their mercury amalgams removed, um, because of like the, the sort of weakness that's left, um, with the composite filling put in can be an increased risk for having to get a root canal. So I think there's probably some, like, you know, I wouldn't rush to get all your mercury amalgams removed. If it's not causing you a problem, I think just making sure that your mercury levels aren't high is a good starting point. Um, I did have one removed and I had a lot of trouble with that area for a while. And then I have one more that I'm like, eh. I want to not touch it for a little while, unless I'm having a problem. So some of the stuff, like the more you learn, the more you're like, Oh my goodness, I need to do this. I need to do this. I need to do this. But I think just making sure you're looking at the whole picture, um, is important. 
Um, and then there's, I mean, when people are smoking, there's over 4,000 chemicals in cigarette smoke. So, you know, I think we forget in the United States how much we, um, aren't exposed to it as much in public places. I went somewhere, where would I, I don't even know where I was out of the country recently, but, um, it was like crazy. I was like, oh my goodness, it's, there's so many people smoking. And why is this? Um, and then I was like, oh, I forget that we, that we don't have that problem, um, as much anymore with some of the rules that have changed, um, unless you're at bars and things like that, but, um, exhaust and, um, pollution is something to consider ammonia, manganese, insect pesticides, which, um, sometimes are necessary because there's so many bad things that can come from insect borne illnesses too. So again, some of those things we have to weigh the risk and the benefits. There is something called lemon eucalyptus, um, which is a pretty strong, um, insecticide or pesticide, not pesticide, I guess, but they are a pest. Maybe that's the right word. Insect repellent. Um, that is pretty effective, but I would say, you know, DEET is still our sort of really most effective thing. So if you're going to places that have a lot of mosquito borne illness, then we really, um, need to, you know, weigh the risks versus the benefits of those things. Um, flame retardants is another thing. So the flame retardants are actually found on, um, they're found like furniture, car seats, things like that. Even sometimes put on clothing, um, like pajamas for kids. Sometimes it will say, um, flame resistant, and it might just be a specific fabric that is already flame resistant, um, because of the type of fabric it is, it might not actually be a, a chemical applied to it. So, you know, I've been one to call and say, Hey, like, I really want to buy this nightgown, but can you tell me it's not sprayed with something? Um, so just doing our due diligence and what we bring in our home furniture for me is a hard one. It is so expensive to get a non-toxic couch. Um, but you're laying on it a lot. And so again, weighing that risk versus benefit and, and how much, you know, how the cost of all of those things, um, but carpets, you know, trying to do hardwood flooring when you can, but certainly those aren't chemical free either. So again, um, figuring out what works for you. Um, but dry cleaning is a hard no for me. Um, I don't care if my clothes are wrinkled. I don't care if I wash them and I have to buy them new after like four or five washes, I'm not buying anything that crazy expensive. So, um, so definitely avoiding the chemicals in the dry cleaning and, um, Aluminum can be another one. So like the deodorants, aluminum deodorant is a hard no as well for me. Um, using one that is aluminum free is important. And then, you know, different pesticides, other tin can actually be, um, one that we test for on some of our, our testing. And so that the interesting thing is there's not a lot of data, like they talk about tin being a toxin, but then there's not a lot of data on like what to do about it. So, um, but something to consider and then fluoride, um, and diesel fumes. So, um, try not to take deep breaths of the gas station, Katie says, um, to try to, to try to prevent that. So, um, certainly these toxins combined together can contribute to inflammation, um, and that inflammation really comes to the cellular level. So this is a picture of a cell, which you may remember from like high school um, biology class, um, but mitochondria, you can see there at the top, these are the really important powerhouses of the cell. They look like sort of like a peanut. Um, but if we can't, if we have this inflammation and the toxins can't get out of the cell, the nutrients and hormones aren't able to do their jobs. And really we're not able to get the cell um, producing energy like it should. So, um, so cellular level inflammation is, is really important thing to consider with toxic things. So we also have acute versus chronic inflammation. So acute inflammation would be like these chemical irritants, infections, you know, um, trauma, burns, lacerations, frostbite, allergic reactions. But then we, if that acute inflammation continues over periods of time, that's when we start to get this chronic inflammation. So we have cardiovascular disease. We've talked about metabolic syndrome, neuro neurological diseases, which we've talked to, we just did a podcast about cognitive nutrients. I don't think we've released that one yet, but that one was focused on, um, some of this like type three diabetes piece of, um, a conversation about Alzheimer's and neurological diseases, autoimmune diseases, rheumatoid arthritis, cancers, lupus, fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, the list goes on for chronic inflammation. So we're trying to, um, reduce that toxic load so that we can decrease the inflammation in our systems. Um, so one of the ways that we do that is by buying organic when we can, and, um, 
we, you know, it's one of those things that it does get expensive. Certainly organic produce sometimes is you, they do use some kinds of pesticides, but they have, um, different ones and, um, you know, deed is not allowed to be used or glycophosphate is not allowed to be used. So, um, again, what we do in our house is trying to, um, look at the dirty dozen and finding the ones that are like the most heavily sprayed and trying to buy organic in that category. And then, um, you know, choosing, I mean, if you're eating a butternut squash, like most likely it, the peel is so thick in that, that there's not as much penetration to the inside part that you're actually eating with those, um, or, you know, other like watermelon or things like that. Um, even bananas have a really thick peel. So things that are, they're going to be important are like your strawberries and, um, your peppers and, and some of those, um, other more you're eating the skin and, um, more fragile type, um, produce. So the other thing, um, is the difference between organic and non-GMO. So non-GMO can actually still use pesticides, herbicides, um, synthetic fertilizers, um, growth producing hormones and antibiotics in non-GMO. So we really want to try to look for the organic labels when we can and certified organic by the USDA. So here's an example of that dirty dozen. So the really dirty ones that have a lot of pesticides are strawberry, spinach, kale, nectarines, apples. Um, and it's so hard in Ohio to find local um, organic apples. We have like one, um, one place I know of. Um, and just their supply isn't always the greatest because it's really hard to grow apples in the Midwest. Um, or, you know, a lot of places it's actually hard to grow apples without um, pesticides. So um, they end up putting some wax on them, which you can try to get off with soaking them in vinegar and things when, before you eat them. But yeah, it's, it's a challenge. Um, so thank you for the apple farmers out there that are actually trying to do this without heavy pesticide use. Um, but grapes, peaches, cherries, all these ones, again, that don't have that really thick peel, pears, tomatoes, celery, and potatoes. Um, so those are the ones that we're trying to buy organic as much as possible. Um, and then the ones that are pretty clean with, despite, um, not being organic are actually like avocados. Again, we don't normally eat the peel there. Um, eggplants, um, pineapples, onions, cauliflower, cantaloupe, honey, honeydew, all your, their melons, um, mushrooms, broccoli, and cabbage. So, um, but then again, some of these are pretty cheap to buy organic, like broccoli and mushrooms. So you can still try to decide what you, um, can afford there, but, avocados. They're so expensive already. Just if you're going to eat avocado, eat whichever one you would like. <laughs> All right. Um, any questions so far? If you have questions, put them in the chat while I take a drink here. All right. Well, no one's got one in there, but if you're still typing, I'll come back to it in a minute. So type in your questions. If you have questions so far, and we'll try to make sure we get to them before the end. Um, but minimizing other substances or toxins in our food lean meats such as pesticides, um, can concentrate in the fats. So, um, consider, I don't know if that's worded correctly, but basically the pesticides can concentrate in the fat. So higher fat meat, you want to choose lean meats, um, because pesticides concentrate in the fat, I think is what, what we're trying to say there. And then organically grown animal products, um, peeling the skin off the produce, especially if it is one that is high pesticide, um, cleaning the produce with biodegradable soap can be an option. Um, although I would say I sort of disagree with this. There's a lot of people out there like in washing and these, you know, whether it's a thieves rinse or other types of things. And I feel like sometimes you can get a little carried away with washing fruits and vegetables because we also know that there's like so many beneficial, like soil-based microorganisms. And so I think we're in this balance of like, preventing toxic exposure, but also getting a good microbiome. Um, so really trying to find those local farms that are doing the right thing. We have an amazing, um, shout out to Mile Creek farm in Dayton, Ohio, um, is doing organic produce. Um, so we get a CSA box starting in May, although we are still getting it now, um, and a little bit into next month, but finding places like that to be in a CSA, could help you try not to feel like you have to like douse your um, vegetables in some kind of soapy water. Um, and then cutting away um, damaged areas can be important, avoiding foods um, that have um, additives in them. So you'll find like um, BTH, which is like got boron in it. Um, 
and other chemicals added to like cereals and um, potential artificial sweeteners. I was actually super disappointed recently. My husband bought, um, and I won't say the brand name. Um, you can ask me later if you want, but he bought this, like he was following some CrossFit people. They bought this like electrolyte powder and the, um, protein powder. And he was like all about it. It tasted great. And come to find out it has sucralose in it, which is like shown to cause insulin resistance and alter your microbiome pretty clearly in the literature. And I was like, I contacted the company and I was like, Hey, like, are you thinking about trying to use another sweetener in this? Because this is like, not cool that you're all these awesome athletes are getting exposed to this and don't really know because it's just like the last ingredient. So make sure you're reading your food labels. And I made him get rid of those <laughs> and not support that company anymore. Um, but it's definitely, um, surprising sometimes when you find things like that and, and things that are marketed as healthy and then, um, limited exposure to canned foods. If you, if you can do that, um, cooking with non-toxic pans, so there's a whole world out there of non-toxic pans. Um, and some of them are better than others. Some of them are more easy to cook with than others. So cast iron is always an option. Um, although it is a little bit more difficult to not burn things and you end up scraping a lot of things off, but, um, we end up using our lip cruzette. I think it's called, I'm not terrible at French, so I've probably butchered that, but those are good options. We have an enameled cast iron. Um, and I also use a pan, I have to think of the name. That's a smaller one um, that actually is a little bit more nonstick that is, is similar. Um, that's a safe one. So we'll make sure we get a list of some of these things out to you guys. So you can check those out if you haven't already. So it's stainless steel is a good option to you if you're not needing um, a more nonstick, but ensure your drinking water is filtered um, even when you're cooking. So I use my reverse osmosis water to boil pasta and things like that. It takes Thankfully we installed a spigot in this house in the basement that we can go downstairs and like it can get in my fan pan faster than like running over to the fridge and trying to fill it up with the, the, the rate that it's coming out of the fridge. So, um, but just think about that. Cause if you're boiling, um, your dinner with some kind of, um, you know, water that has a bunch of crap in it, it's getting into your food that you're cooking. So trying to do that as much as possible is good. Um, and so we already talked about this a little bit, health hack number two, clean up your personal care and beauty products. So, um, look for things that, um, are EWG, um, rated, um, you can make your own oftentimes. So if you're looking for a different, um, our, our Facebook group, if you're not in our Facebook group, make sure you do join our Facebook group. Um, if one of our team can put our Facebook group link in the chat, that'd be great. Um, but join there because we're going to be sharing stuff throughout the time that we're doing our detox program, whether you're in the detox program or not, we're going to be sharing some information about some of these products. So, um, and recipes for, and I would love to hear your guys' recipes. If you have things, um, share them in the group as well, um, about, you know, what you use for laundry soap or bathroom cleaner. Um, but I definitely love thieves for cleaning, um, as one option. All right. So strategy number three, which this is a big part of our plan is the foods that we eat. So we are trying to, um, take the toxins that are coming into our body and we have what's called phase one support, which we'll talk about phase one protection and then phase two support, and then getting those toxins out of the body by eliminating them. And so we think about, this is really complex. <laughs> and so this is something that even our farm, you know, our clinicians and, and maybe, you know, your doctors saw this at some time in their medical school career, but a lot of people don't go back to this on a, on a frequent basis, but this is the, a little diagram or a picture of your detoxification pathways and phase one um, is these reactions that are, you know, oxidation, reducing hydration, like different, like processes that are happening and turning substances into intermediate, intermediate metabolites. And so reactive oxygen species can pr be produced through this process, which is, is some damage essentially, or inflammation, um, that can cause tissue damage. And, but the nutrients that are needed to support this process is, um, a lot of B vitamins. So B2, B3, B6, um, folic acid, B12, um, glutathione. So glutathione is like the master antioxidant in our body and, um, also can be supported by like N-acetylcysteine and, um, other precursors, vitamin C. 
Um, but branched chain amino acids, flavonoids, phospholipids are all used in that phase one. And then phase two is when we have this, um, some more complex things going on. And so we see that and we turn, and we turn these into things that can actually now be ex excreted. Sometimes phase one is really activating something. So it could be activating a drug to the, to the drug metabolite that it needs to be to have its action in the body. It could be activating a nutrient to have an action in the body. Um, but it's also working to, to activate or detox, um, as well. So, um, so that's just a broad sweep, but you can see, you know, some of the nutrients used in the second are actually some amino acids. So protein is really important in phase two. So we're going to talk about, that's why protein is part of the plan. Um, and then antioxidant protective type things. So we talked about vitamin C, but other antioxidants, CoQ10, um, our thiols, which we get from garlic and onions or cruciferous vegetables, our bioflavonoids, which we get from a lot of our citrus fruits, um, zinc, copper, selenium, manganese, all of those are really important there. So, and then the byproducts, um, we also, you know, there can be endotoxins that are, are released and, and actually are excreted in our stool as well. So lots of detoxification things going on in the liver, but we have, um, when we do in, put a healthy diet in, we do reduce our food triggers and our inflammation, we are supporting our liver function and we're promoting eating those clean and organic foods. Um, and our diet plan is high in phytonutrients. So lots of colorful fruits and vegetables. We always talk about eating the rainbow, making sure we've got some purples, some reds, some oranges, some greens, and um, really targeting the antioxidants as well in the form of supplements and in the form of the nutrients that we get in our diet. Um, it's not what it is not is calorie specific. So we are not here to prescribe how many calories that you eat per day. Um, if you are really active, you may need to eat more than is recommended on this dietary plan. If you're running training for a marathon or a triathlon or Ironman or one of those things, maybe you're CrossFit, um, athlete, you might need more, um, than the typical, the plan that we do. So our plan is probably people that are working out, you know, and there's workouts built in um, to the plan, but three or four days a week, five days a week, um, you know, moderate activity level. Um, but we may, you may need to bump up what you eat or add more protein, um, to the shake times. And we'll talk about that as we do our kickoff for the program as well. Um, and we're trying to encourage again, that healthful elimination of toxins and balance hormones. So when we get too many toxins, um, that can stress out our body also stress itself can be toxic, which we have a whole session on that we're going to talk about. So, um, balancing hormone metabolism is really important. We can measure toxicity levels. So if that's something that you're interested in, doing with a practitioner on our team. Um, you can check out our website and, and booking, but we have hair analysis. Um, we can do urine testing for toxins. We can actually look via blood testing as well. Um, and, and see, you know, what's going on in there. And there's other types of, um, detox, which we mentioned, um, chelation is really for people that have, they know they have high mercury levels or high, um, specific, um, toxic levels. Um, sometimes there's more cellular level detoxification programs, maybe more extensive over six to 12 months. Um, the sauna we already talked about is important. Fasting is actually, um, can be helpful, um, in probably that 12 hour window. So not eating in, you know, your, from the time you finish dinner to the time you wake up. So try and 8 PM to 8 AM or 7 PM to 7 AM. Um, not necessarily prolonged fasting, um, exercise. We talked about the movement piece, the supplement supported detoxification. Um, and then the colonic cleansing, I think is, um, a little bit extreme for, for most patients. Um, but, um, there have been some case reports that, that, that was helpful. Um, so we are going to talk a little bit more specifically about our reset. And so we have this 14 day program that is, detox.farmtotable.life. So if you haven't signed up and I saw a few of you that joined have already signed up. So that's awesome. Um, so we are starting and kicking this off on November 6th is our kickoff night. Um, you can choose though, if it works out in your schedule to pick a different start date, that's totally fine. Um, and you can adjust your start date in your app, but 
we are using the WellWorld app. And so this is a super easy to use app. You can connect your Apple Watch or your Fitbit and, and connect your, your steps and, and keep track of your exercise and, and goals like that. It also helps you keep track of your nutrition goals and your supplements and things that you're going to be taking during the program. Um, it is our, so it's only $19 to join our program. So that does not include the comprehensive cleanse kit, but that can be purchased separately through your app. Once you've downloaded that, um, and then that one is where you are going to have a shake. You're going to have a couple shakes actually per day. And then also some supplements to take with those for extra support. Again, you do not have to do that. You can join our program for the $19, um, change your diet, change your, um, your lifestyle practices and learn a lot along the way without the supplements, but the supplements are really going to get you further. If you're looking for, um, you know, a, a more, I guess, extensive detoxification and then, um, accountability. So a lot of us, you know, we do this, we're going to be having, you know, this sort of ongoing option for pa patients to do this. If, but I think joining during the time when we are leading it means that when you jump on those coaching calls, you can ask questions and you can hear from other people that have tried different things and incorporated different things. Um, and so it's a lot more engaging than just um, doing it with the app on your own. So I think that's another reason um, to jump on and, and make sure that you're, you're engaged with us. And so we mentioned, we're going to have three different calls. So we'll have that kickoff call. And then we will also have two other coaching calls, one about detoxing our mind. Um, and then other, some more extensive about some of these other things that we've mentioned tonight as well. And then we also have an ebook download free copy of decreasing your, um, toxic load as well. That really goes through a lot of these things step-by-step. Step. And so the well world app, super easy. You can download that. It has personalized meal plans, recipes, shopping lists. Also, like I mentioned, the tracking of your goals and also um, integrate the Fitbit, the Android, um, the iOS, Android fitness trackers. And um, we also have in there seven day workout, um, weight workout, practical breath work and that ebook. So you can also order the supplement kit directly through there and then we shipped right to you um, to get started. So this is just a picture of what that app looks like for you when you're in there, you can add your progress to your goals, um, and you'll be able to see like what you want to eat, your daily guide, your recipes, um, supplements, and the different, um, videos that we have stored in there for you as well. Um, and so the paleo cleanse product is what we're using for the detoxification. If you are vegan and do not, um, eat animal products, then um, let us know if you still want to join. We can hook you up with a veggie cleanse product. Um, the reason I chose the paleo product is I just think it tastes better out of the two, but I, the other one is not like not palatable. It's just, I like the, um, the option um, for the, the taste per, part. We bought them all and, and tasted them here at our house. And so the paleo cleanse was the winner on the taste. But like I said, um, you can do it with the... Um, with the vegan one as well. So just um, shoot me an email, respond to the email I sent out about the um, time tonight or the reminder, and we'll get you the details on that. And let's see here. So this is what it looks like once you're in the app, you've got those eBooks, you've got some daily stretching, you've got a meal plan, and then all those workouts as well. So I'm excited to do those with you. And then these are just some of the breath work videos that we have pulled in there. And this is the kit. So it comes with 28 drink packets, which include the protein and the, um, capsules. The kit is pretty similar. If you do, if you decide, um, to send us a message to do the veggie kit, but you can see a lot of the foods that we talked about are included in here in a veggie and fruit blend. A lot of those nutrients that we talked about that are important for liver support are in here. And also, um, some other ones here in the, in the supplements, um, green tea extract, um, Molly Benham helps with sulfur and acetylcysteine helps support the glutathione. So we've got a lot of good things and then see these amino acids that are part of those phase two reactions are also here as well. All right. So as far as steps go, um, the first step is really like planning, um, getting, signing up for the program, getting the app downloaded, planning ahead for what date you're going to start. And then step two is grabbing those supplements. If you're going to be able to join us with that. Um, I do want to say, if you 
are nursing a baby or pregnant, we do not recommend the supplements. Um, so you can absolutely join us for the lifestyle changes, but we don't support a heavy detoxification during either of those times in your life for the women out there. Um, but I know a lot of bre- uh, people breastfeeding have written in and asking us about that. And I know it's a hard time where you're like, okay, I'm done with pregnancy. I'm ready to get my body back. I'm ready to get back on track and I'm, but I'm still nursing. And so that, that can be challenging, but we don't want any risk of excess toxins going into the breast milk during that detoxification program. Um, and, you know, causing harm to baby. So, um, so just join us for the exercise component and the nutrition component this time, if that's you. Um, Megan asked, when should we order the supplements by to make sure we get it before November 6th? They're shipping us pretty fast, but I would say, um, trying to order by, you know, mid next week or early next week would be great. Especially if you know, you're going to join now, um, just give yourself a week if you can to get those, get those ordered. Um, but again, you know, not everyone has to start on the exact same day. So if someone decides they're a little late to the game or you invite someone else to join you, um, I am going to put this recording up for people to download and listen to. So if they do join late, they can always, sit in on some of our calls and start there's, you know, supplements a few days late if they need to. Whoops. And then, um, this is what the just app looks like when you're going to purchase those supplements. And then, so this is just a little picture. So starting first step, signing up detox.farmtotable.life, um, downloading the app, purchasing the kit, picking your start date. So you can either start with us on, Probably most people will start on Monday the 7th um, after doing the sort of kickoff call, but you're welcome to start at the 6th too. Again, it's flexible to you, but we will sort of be going from the 7th forward. Um, and then really cleaning out your fridge and your pantry and going shopping with your new shopping list um, so that you're prepared on that night that we get started. So, um, and then after 14 days, we are hoping that you're feeling a lot better. You're less um, fatigued. I think, you know, the first couple of days are a little bit challenging because you're taking out your caffeine. So if you're planning on starting and you drink a lot of caffeine, definitely wean down the caffeine um, in the next week or so and try to get to a point where you're not drinking as much. Um, and then this is again, the website. So again, $19 is what you, as the recipes, the meal planning, the fitness exercises, guided breathing exercises, access to the app and, um, the three coaching calls that we're doing. So that's, that's a lot of things for $19, but the supplements are extra. If, um, that is what you, if you're able to do that, we definitely recommend those if those are safe for you. Um, and then we also will, um, share our functional medicine discovery class with you. And, um, we're going to have sort of a call where we talk about sort of next steps. What did you, what worked for you and, and, um, talk about other, you know, programs and, and help, you know, if people need to get further, sometimes getting well, I always say is, is a journey. So this is a great place to start. Um, but sometimes people need a little bit more extensive work and that's where we can sort of talk about what those options are. Um, when you're done with the program, if, if you need it, if you don't need it, great. Um, and so right now is the time to sign up if you're interested. So you can make sure you get those supplements in time. And, um, we really, again, wants you to give your body the best chance to reset while you infuse it with the right nutrients and support it because your body can heal and can regenerate. And it just needs the nutrients to do that. And so part of that is the food intake. Part of it is the rest and digest piece and the de-stressing and the sleep, um, and really, um, supporting our, our system in all the ways that we can. So we'll just leave that, um, website up there for a moment. And I want to see if we have any questions in the chat box. I can find my chat box sometimes. There it is. So I think I answered the questions that came in. And Katie, thank you for posting the um, Facebook group. If people aren't part of our Facebook group, please join us. Ask your questions in there too. Awesome. Well, that is all we have tonight. So if I'll stay on for a few more minutes with questions, but um, otherwise we hope to see you at our kickoff call on November 6th, which will also be at 8 p.m. Well, actually will be at 8 p.m. Um, Eastern. I know this one started at 7.30, but 
Um, so we're excited. We're excited to see um, how you guys do and um, excited to, you know, start this journey with you. So thanks so much for joining in tonight or if you're listening later, thanks for your time.